Lord. Lord, we thank you for this moment. Thank you for every other time. Thank you for time past. Thank you for what you have done, what you are doing, what you will do. Thank you, Jesus, for being our help for ages past. Thank you for being our hope for years Thank to come. You, Thank you, our sustainer. Thank, Thank you, you, our deliverer. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, our hope. Thank, Thank you, Mr. Lord. King. Thank you, Return all the glory to your name. Thank you. Accept our worship Hallelujah. in the name of Jesus. Father, tonight we are here. Amen. To study at your feet. Feed us with the bread of life in the name of Jesus. Amen. The grace conquered the spirit behind the world. Father, give unto us in Jesus' name. For it is written, Amen. Let her kill it, but the spirit giveth life. Lord, mm -hmm. grace to contact the spirit behind the world. Release unto us tonight in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Once again, I bless the Lord and I welcome you to tonight's session. Just Thank like you, we have said, we'll be considering David for some time, and I guess this is the third week. And today we'll be looking at David yes. the musician. David the musician. I believe we are learning something from David so far. Yes, sir. So, good. So for every section, we'll be learning new things as we take new aspects of his life and times. So today we'll be looking at David the musician. And our reading will be taken from 1 Samuel 16, verse 17 to 18. 1 Samuel 16, verse 17 to 18. I read, And Saul said unto his servant, Prepare me now a man. Provide me now a man that can play well and bring him to me. Then answered one of the servants and said, Behold, I have seen a son of Jesse the Blethemite that is cunning in playing and a mighty valiant man and a man of war and prudent in matters and a comely person and the Lord is with him. That is 1 Samuel 16. 17 to 18. Praise God. Now, this is the background of the meeting between Saul and David. Someone sometime, somewhere unknown to David, had seen him play music and the person felt David is good on the instrument and has good voice and his, compos his, his, his comp music composition is sweet to the ears. And then the person had taken note of him. And a day came when the king needed someone who is skillful in music, and his name came to mind immediately. Most, David became the reference. David became the go-to person. And then he was recommended to the king. Now. Remember that after Saul's rebuke at Gilgal by Prophet Samuel, Saul appears to have become more abandoned than ever. You know, Samuel told him, God is disappointed in you. And he's taking his, the, the kingdom away from you. So from this time that Samuel had pronounced this to Saul, Saul had been abandoned by God. So he was indifferent over his rejection as if it had been a wrong done to him. Saul never take it serious. Saul never see the need to reconcile with God. Saul never see the need to cry for forgiveness. So he just felt, after all I have done, when after laying my life you know, down for the nation of Israel to go to, 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 to Ziklag to fight, I mean, uh, uh, to the Amalekite to fight, and then I won the battle. This is all I have. This is all I have to show for it. This is the, the ingratitude that I must be paid with. So Saul does not see any wrong he had done. He felt he was the one that has been wronged here. And though in his innermost heart, he felt that he had sinned. Because he knew he had 
disobey the orders of God through Prophet Samuel to him. So he would neither make acknowledgement and repent of his transgression, nor return to a proper mind. Saul never made attempt to repent. Saul never made attempt to ask for forgiveness, to, to, to go to God in prayers, to make sac sacrifice of atonement. Saul became moody. Saul became irritative. Things easily irritate him, became moody, became gloomy, vindicating, you know, vindicative, and all sorts of miseries, anxiety, and terror, you know, began to happen to him and around him. Now, at this point in time, all these things that were happening to him and what he was going through was likened to mental aberration, mental issues. Like the Bible says, said it's the, an evil spirit from the Lord comes to torment him. So he came, that, that spirit comes to tinker with his mentality, to make him uneasy, to make him uncomfortable. He began to misbehave. So these are some of the symptoms that anyone who insists and do not repent, continuing in unrepented sin, gets. These are symptoms that anyone who disobeys the Holy Spirit and his promptings get such fellow will be given over to a reprobate mind and what's reprobate reprobate is a deprived mind a deprived sanity a morally bankrupt and condemned mind a mind that could not think straight a mind that 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 sees self-glory self-gratification in first samuel 16 verse 14 the bible says the spirit of the lord departed from saul and an evil spirit from the Lord troubled him. I remember Apostle Paul also said something similar in Romans 1, 28. He said that being the, 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 those people who reject God in their knowledge, he said they have been given over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient. When you begin to reject God, his instruction, his, his, his guidance, you begin to disobey the promptings of the Holy Spirit, you discover you are doing things that are not convenient. You discover you'll be making too many mistakes. You'll be taking wrong decisions. You'll be losing money. You'll be losing, make, wasting time, losing friends, making wrong friends, and all sorts you'll be losing in all fronts. And life will be inconvenient. So by the time one is handed over to a reprobate mind, live an inconvenient life. I pray God will give us grace to obey him in all fronts in Jesus' name. When David follows his sheep, I need you to, to pay attention now. When David followed his sheep, he played the string of his much-loved musical instrument. He had little idea that it was by his harp he was forced to be brought into prominence in the land. He was just enjoying himself playing his musical instrument. He never had an idea, he never had an inkling that this music will bring him before will bring him into prominence. In fact, the music was just a side attraction to him, was just an hobby. The business he was into was being a shepherd, shepherding the sheep. And if he's going to make any fortune, he knew in his mind that it's just going to be through that business. Little did he know that his own spare time, what he loves to do in his spare time, the love he had for music was what was going to bring him into prominence. So David in his devotion to his harp had no thought of such. So when there was time for him to be mentioned before King Saul, it was easy for that servant of Saul who had acknowledged him, who had seen him play, who, who could vouch for his skill and professionalism, you know, made mention of him before King Saul. But he never also knew that he was also helping to fulfill God's purpose. The servants that recommended David to Saul never knew he was also helping to fulfill God's purpose in David's life. So while David followed the sheep, he had ample time at his disposal. He had time, you know, 
to rest, to watch the sheep graze and all that. So those were his spare time. Instead of letting those time go idle, he concentrated his attention on his love for music until he acquired that skill, that rare skill of excellence in playing music, in composing song, in playing well on the harp. It was through these self-taught attainments that mm -hmm. he was called forth into public life. It was through this skill he developed in his spare time that he was brought forth before King Saul into the palace. So, spare time, David managed well. So, the spare time, David managed well, brought him into prominence before King Saul. So, David did not neglect his sheep for his harp. He was ready to encounter the lion and the bear. He was not carried away while playing his harp music and all that. When the bear and lion came to attack, he was alert. He was not carried away. He was not frolicking around. So he was a responsible shepherd, responsible to his sheep as at when due. He knew spare time and he knew work time. He played music well in his spare time. He learned it well in his spare time. And when it's his work time, he also gives his sheep the best and all of his attention. So the reason why he could not lose any of his sheep to the bear or lion, because he was well alert. So a man is commonly either made or mad for life by what he does in his leisure time. For what David was doing in his leisure time, that made him and brought him into prominence. My question tonight is, what do you do in your leisure time? How do you spend your leisure time? What do you spend it on? What men do with their leisure time greatly impacts on their life by bringing them into prominence or into destruction. So many people in their spare time, they are working to sin. In their spare time, they are working to adultery, into fornication, into gossip, into so many things. Because they could not take charge of that spare time to do something better and grow a new part of their life, just experience a new thing about themselves, about their life and time, which David did. And that was the turning point in his life. What he enjoyed giving and doing in his spare time ended up promoting him. And you can be sure that so many people, what they do in their spare time, end up destroying them. What do you do in your spare time? Praise God. Once again, I welcome you to tonight. It's time for discussion. It's time for question. It's time for contribution. You can unmute your mic and let's talk. God bless you. Praise the Lord. You can unmute your mic. Can you hear me, everyone? Hallelujah, sir. Yes, you can unmute your mic. Question time, contribution time. Amen. Amen.